It's uh, 26 past 7. I want to talk about the Post right now. I want to talk about Australia Post, who are set to announce their first annual loss since 2015. And I, you don't need me to tell you about the pressures that Australia Post has been under with the decline of traditional letters services. And lots of calls have existed for some time about ways that Australia Post should change the way they do business, including, of course, less distribution of letters throughout the week. Keith Willihan is the Liberal MP for the seat of Menzies, who has had three post offices closed in his own electorate recently. Uh, good morning, Keith. Thank you for your time. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me, and good morning to your listeners. How do you feel about the closure of post offices in your electorate? I understand the disruption that's occur- occurring in this area and the pressures on Australia Post, particularly in letters, uh, but I feel like it's preempting some of the closures in some of the growth corridors of Melbourne. So in the last 12 months, we've seen the Blackburn Post Office close. We've had the Box Hill Central Post Office close and the Mitcham Post Office close, um, all before this submission and report has been properly considered. And um, I just wish Australia Post would just pause for a bit because uh, some of the data that they're looking at, I think, was disrupted by the COVID numbers and, for example, Box Hill saw um, a decrease in population as a lot of people went back um, to other places and interstate, but they've come back. And if you go to Box Hill now, it's a city within a city. So to not have a post office just doesn't make any sense at all. Is there some stubbornness on the part of Australia Post, do you think, Keith? Like, if it were up to me, if I was in charge today, I would say just make letter delivery Monday, Wednesday and Friday. It wouldn't change too much, but it would save a whole lot of money. That's de- that definitely should be on the table. There's many different ways to skin this cat, and um, I'm not an expert in uh, running a postal service like that, but uh, that makes a lot of sense to me rather than just completely closing a post office. The other thing is just the lack of community consultation. In some areas, I get that the business case isn't there, um, but you can do other things like having an in-conjunction post office where a, a news agent can provide a lot of the services. And let's not forget the services aren't just letters and parcels. For a lot of people, including people with disabilities, it's about help with processing their bills in person, doing passports and passport photos. And, and I've spoken to news agents; They're more than happy to take a lot of those services on. Indeed. Uh, just finally, Keith, when did you last visit a post office yourself? Uh, quite recently for um, uh, my children's passport and uh, photo update. I had to go get the form. Uh, but as members of parliament, you can understand that um, we... We're pretty good customers of Australia Post, and uh, that's why people see a lot of our stuff in their letterbox. Keith, uh, I'm sure every listener still wants to see things in their letterboxes, but I, I dare say that we're heading towards a time when flexibility is going to be key, uh, both for us who receive them and use the services, but the business itself. Appreciate your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.